Hello everyone, uh, this episode we're going to look at computing the dot product of two vectors on the GPU using CUDA. Um, this one's a really easy example actually. Uh, it's very, very similar to the finding a max value in an array uh, video that I did in uh, a different video. I'm just going to do this one. I find the simpler ones, the simpler examples, tend to be more popular. So if somebody's searching for specifically a dot product, uh, they'll find this. Then. Um, very similar to though to the uh, finding the max value in an array. In fact, it's 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 easier really. So, anyways, let's just uh, get to it. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm actually I'm not gonna bother typing it all out. I'll just kind of run through it and explain what's going on. It's not very long. Uh, for anyone just joining, maybe if this is their first video seeing. Um, in this series that I'm doing, it's uh, a series on just doing different algorithms in CUDA. Some of them are easy, some of them are going to be harder. But so far, at least, all of them have involved just just four files. We have a main file, kernel header file, kernels file, file where we store the, the code, and the make file. And the make file hasn't changed in any of them, actually. Um, yeah, so you can just... I always forget how to write make file, so you can look at this if you want, just kind of blindly copy it, uh, just to compile. Anyways, so in this uh, this example for dot product, we just have our includes here, io stream, c time, random, and our kernels.cu header file. Uh, the main function, so n is the going to be the size of the vectors we're doing dot product on. Um, h product and device product is the the answer, the, what is the dot product for the host and the device respectively, and then float um, hx, hy, and float device x, device y are the are two vectors x and y basically um, representing the data that we're going to be that we're going to be dot producting. If that makes any sense. Um, and it, again, the h and d and d is specifying the host and device. So the first step is we just mal we just um, allocate all our memory. Uh, pretty simple. We do set the device product, so the the the, the answer that's going to be stored on the device as as zero. That starts at zero. Um, we fill our host arrays, our host x and y's, which is some random data. You can put anything in there. I just um, this is I think numbers between zero and one random numbers. I think. Yeah, I'm, I think so. Uh, but it doesn't matter. You can put any dummy data there, really, just to test it. Um, we have our timing variables for the GPU code. Um, the next step is to copy all our data f data to the device and start the timer. So we're just copying the X and Y host arrays or host vectors to the device X and Y host vectors. Then we call the kernel, and in this case, you can see I've done 256 blocks, each block having 256 threads. Um, once that is complete, we stop the GPU timer and copy the answer, D product, back to the host. So we're copying D product into host product. And then we just uh, report our results and timing, and then I've included right here um, just a simple um, CPU version just to compare timing results and then of course we free our memory for both the host and the, and the device memory. So that's it for the main file. Um, the, kernel, the kernel's header file, even simpler. Uh, we only have one kernel in this example. I just called it uh, dot product kernel. It takes the X and Y vectors or arrays, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to be computing the dot product of X and Y. Uh, that answer is going to be stored in dot, and the the arrays are of size m. Okay, so our kernel file, again, only one kernel, very simple. This is very similar to the finding the max value in an array. It's, it's almost identical, well, it's, it's easier, it's a more simplified version. Um, if you've seen the, if you've seen that video, finding the max value in an array, we actually had to use sort of this mutex idea because there was no atomic operation for finding the maximum between 
uh, two floats, but in this case we don't have to do that because there is an atomic add for floats, uh, you can see at the bottom here. So anyways, running through this we have our global index, um, our stride, this is just enables us to, say for example we had um, 10 blocks and each block had 10 threads, well that's a total of 100 global threads, but what if our vectors are size 200 for example? Well in that case we need to have each thread do um, twice two computations and if the vector was of size 300 each thread would have to do three for example and that's what this while loop here is doing. Um, anyway, and once this while loop is complete we just store the, the result in our shared memory cache so each, each block has its own cache um, and so each thread in the block updates its temporary product that it's computed so far. We sync our threads. And then the interesting part is, of course, the reduction. And this is reducing the, the shared memory cache down to the first entry in the cache so that every block, every block has its own cache. And then every block after this reduction, the first entry in the cache will be the, the sort of running, the sort of um, partial dot product that's been computed so far. And then finally at the end, uh, we just have for each block the zero thread atomically add to the global answer, this dot which initially is zero. But uh, it, yeah, so does that atomic add there. And then that's it, make file, yep, that's the same. So I can do an example, so we'll do an example here where uh, vectors of size 256 by 256 times 1,000. So this is a good example where this while loop will be important because this is a thousand times bigger than the actual number number of total threads that we have. Anyway, so this is a these these are basically t taking the dot products of vectors of about uh, 65 million entries each. And so we'll do that. Okay, so running, you can see then that the on the GPU, well, first of all, the answers are the same, except there, you can see that it's actually slightly off, and I'll explain that in a minute, but otherwise they're basically the same uh, for the GPU and CPU code, so that's good. Um, and you can see that the GPU is significantly faster, taking only 16 milliseconds versus 84 for the CPU. Now, there's a couple things to note here. This, and you can even tell when you run it, and I'll run it again. So there's a delay here, and then boom, both go. And that's because, if you remember, um, in the main file, I'm actually only timing the GPU code for the kernel call. I'm not, I'm not timing for the, the copy of memory to the device, or the copy of memory from the device back to the host. And that's actually, for, the, for this example, is what takes quite a bit of time. Um, so what that means is that the you wouldn't want to have a situation, for example, where you do some work on the CPU and then you do one dot product on the GPU and then copy everything back and then do some more work on the CPU and then do one dot product on the GPU and then copy back. You don't want to have a situation like that because the copying, even though the GPU is faster at computing the, the dot product, the copying back and forth will take way more time. So what you want to have is something where maybe you do either your entire algorithm is on the GPU, or maybe you do um, some work on the CPU, and then you copy to the device, and you do a whole bunch of dot products on the GPU, like thousands of them, and then only then you copy it back to the host. So that it's, it, um, it, it hides the, um, the, the transfer of, to the device and, and back from the device, because the copy is what really takes a long time. But anyways, uh, I digress. As you can see, the if you're just counting the, the timing for the the, compu the computing of the dot products, the GPU is significantly faster. And again, this is for um, arrays of size, like 65 million-ish. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is that you notice that there, the answers are slightly off here. And that's because, so we're doing a dot products of 65 million size, 
the defectors are around 65 million of size. So that's a lot of computation, and the thing you have to remember is that between the CPU and the GPU, um, multiplications and multiplic multiplying two floating numbers is not associative, it, or multiplying them and then adding them is not associative, and so, since that's what we're doing in the job product, which means that it depends on the order in which these operations are done. Um, and that's just a result of floating point arithmetic on computers. So that means there's going to be some errors. So one thing you could do is instead of a float temp with here in the kernel, if you change this to, well actually let me just show you first, just to show you that for in cases where there's not, um, in cases where the, the dot products are not big vectors, you, we basically get the same, the same answer. So I'll do that here. So if we did say 128 times 128, so this is like vectors of size 16,000 plus ish, and this will show us that there's, there's since there's much less of these computations, um, vectors are much smaller than this less floating point error of rounding error, and so we'll see um, that in that case the we get the same answer for the GPU and the CPU. Yeah, so here you can see there is no floating point there. They're both the same. There now one thing we could do, let's change this back. Back to sixty-five million ish. Now, if you'll notice, if we change this from a float to a double, it's going to be more precise, this partial product, and that should help us in accuracy. So, remember before we got, yeah, there's a 4, there was a 3 there, right in there, 4, 3, there's a little bit of error. Let's try this. And now you can see they're exactly the same here. There's no, there's, m there's much less rounding error. And it actually took about the same amount of time too in this case. The only thing is you have to remember that, so basically we're kind of trading off more accuracy by using double, but using doubles on the GPU is, is slower. Now in this case it, it looks like it's, you know, pretty much the same, maybe only slightly slower. So not a big deal, but something to consider. Anyways, um, I think that's it for this video. I know I, I know I keep saying I'm going to do this uh, prime sitting example, and I will do it. <laughs> Um, just haven't done it yet. Uh, maybe that'll be the next one. Um, yeah, I just wanted to do an easy one after we, I, the last video I did was on the binary trees. Really cool example. Kind of difficult. Uh, was more involved, so I figured I'd just do a nice easy one since these ones tend to be popular, anyways. Um, so, anyways, till our next video. I hope hopefully everyone's learning something. Um, thanks for watching.